Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy. And today's video is going to be a Bible view of prepping. The Bible says that in the last days people would be roving about looking for knowledge and indicates that they would actually be finding it. The flood is coming. And everyone here on earth is starting to recognize it. Not just those people that's watching my videos, not just the members of the churches of Christendom, and not even uh, just plain religious people in general, but everyone. It's not going to be an actual flood because the Bible records that God promised not to ever destroy civilization that way again. But we are facing a figurative flood like the one that Jesus spoke of when he said, Just as in the days of Noah, so the days of the Son of Man will be. So what did he mean when he said those words? Well, here is an out-to-date English language 21st century explanation for anyone that has a hard time understanding what the Bible teaches us. First off, as I said before, everyone alive knows that something is up. Since that is the case, everyone that I, and I mean everyone, is doing what they can to prepare by spending every spare moment getting ready for the flood. But there are things that just being alive requires of us, so that what we call every spare moment is oftentimes quite limited. We no longer live in a world where the entire planet is covered by food producing, productive, protective forest. So we can't just live as Adam and Eve. Unlike them, we need agricultural products so uh, that we can eat. Just going without food is not an option. Since we live in a society based on money, we need money if we expect to have food. We also need some kind of shelter to protect us from the elements that were originally held back by the Earth's natural systems. So money is also necessary if we want shelter. For the vast majority of people alive on the Earth, the only way to acquire the money that we need for food and shelter is to work. As incomes continue to spiral downward while the cost of food and shelter grows exponentially upward, we're being forced to work longer and harder to get the amount of money that we need to survive in this world. That means that on a regular basis, the amount of resources that we have to dedicate to prepping for the flood is actually becoming less as we get closer and closer to the time of the flood when we need to prepare even more. And it isn't just work that's robbing us of our time and resources. Many of us recognize that the people that we work with don't get promoted for doing a good job, but often it is the ones that go golfing with the boss. So now we have to set aside resources just so that we can go golfing. That leaves us even less resources to dedicate to the flood. Many of us had children before we woke up to the fact that the flood was coming. And perhaps if we had understood the implications of the flood back then, we would have delayed having our kids until after the flood. But we can't change the past, and now that we have our children, we love them so much that good as uh, we wouldn't be willing to give them up no matter what. Well, just like everyone that has children, we want to be perceived as good parents, and it's just common knowledge that good parents attend every meeting of the PTA or whatever they call it nowadays. And when other good parents that attend them meetings ask us if our kids are in dance class or on a soccer team, we don't want to appear as if we limit the amount of time and resources that we're willing to dedicate to our children that we love so very much, so we sign up. Yahweh is a very forgiving God. And the scriptures show over and over again that he is more than willing to accept whatever you can dedicate to him as long it is, as it is your best. And what is and isn't your best is between you and him. It's not my business or anyone else's business what is your best. Once again, I want to illustrate what I mean. If the absolute best that you can do to prepare for this coming flood is to purchase some swim trunks, then get yourself some swim trunks. For someone that just woke up to what's going on, getting some swim trunks could be considered your best. In fact, someone that's been awake to what's coming for a couple of months or so may have had a chance to not only just uh, get swim trunks, but maybe they got themselves some goggles or a snorkel. We're all at different levels of spiritual maturity and the Creator recognizes this. There may even be some that don't have a snorkel and goggles but feel that a better option may be to get some floaties. You know what floaties are. I'm talking about them things you blow up and you put them up on your arms. That's, that's floaties. 
I can almost guarantee you that there would have been a bunch of people treading water outside of the ark that wished that they had got some swim trunks, goggles, snorkel, and floaties. It's only reasonable that those items would have been very much appreciated in such a situation. If you've ever been to summer Bible school as a child, then you're probably very familiar with the story of Noah's Ark, and that's why I'm using the ark to illustrate what I'm uh, talking about. That's also why Jesus referred to the ark when trying to explain to those listeners back then what it was that they were facing and how important it was for them to prepare. Now I'm going to read the whole account of what Jesus said as it's recorded in Luke chapter 17 and verses 26 through 27. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, and marrying, and being given in marriage. Up to the day that Noah entered the ark, then the flood came and destroyed them all. We could add PTA meetings and golf to this list as well. Simple, everyday, mundane things are what got them folks killed. I think of stockpiling rice and beans or stockpiling ammo or buying up gold and silver is somewhat like if Noah had bought swim gear. I'm not saying that he didn't prepare in ways other than building the ark. I personally got rice, beans, ammo, and silver myself. But swim trunks ain't what Noah was famous for. There may be some small floods before the big flood gets here, and I already admitted earlier my floaties are already aired up. But what is the point of getting safely through the collapse and then just getting killed at Armageddon? Knowing that civiliz civilization is about to get destroyed, you should know also that trying to fit in with that civilization it is not a wise use of your time and resources. If you're awake to the fact that something is wrong, well, wake up the rest of the way because it ain't something that's wrong. Everything is wrong. As a friend of mine told me yesterday, we aren't on the last chapter of this here book. We're on the last page. So if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. <laughs>